Yeah, hi. Hi there, yeah. This is Zen Dude Fitness, the jump rope hotline. Oh, interesting. Oh, you're new. You're new to jumping rope. Congrats. Congrats on the journey, my dude. Hell yeah. So what seems to be the problem? Ah, very interesting. Okay, so you think because you're a beginner that you're not going to learn how to be able to jump rope. Ha! Ha! Brandon. Brandon. We have another one. Ha! We have another one that thinks you're not going to be able to jump. Ha! <laughs> What's up, players? What's going on, Zendu Nation? This is Dan Whitmer, and today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to jump rope if you are a beginner. Now, we have released a video on how to jump rope, six basic steps. It's linked up, check that out if you haven't already. But from getting so much great feedback from the YouTube community, we've started to focus in a on a little bit more of what you guys really truly need help with if you are a beginner. Brandon and I, first of all, cannot thank you guys enough. We love the momentum that's building and we love hearing about the stories of people losing weight and living a happier life through doing jump rope. In this video, Video, we're gonna go over the fundamentals again, but we're really gonna focus in on the difficulties that most of you have been telling us that you're facing. If you like this tutorial and want more of them, give it a thumbs up below. And go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you want more workouts, tutorials, and everything involving getting lean with a jump rope and your body. After learning how to jump rope, if you're a beginner and you wanna get started with some workouts that are that kind of ease you into the workouts that we do here at Zen Dude Fitness, go ahead and click the link below and check out our free four week challenge. It's great for beginners. If if you're advanced, it works too, but especially good if you're just starting out. We also have our recommended jump rope that I'm using in this video linked up below. It's cross rope, it's awesome, it's the best, most durable rope that we found thus far, so check it out. First of all guys, just to talk a little bit about what we talked about in the last video, you want to measure your rope properly. So, just a rule of thumb, when you're measuring your rope or when you're picking it, I want you to step in the middle of it like you see here, pull it up. Uh, to the sides, like right in your armpit, and the rope cable should actually be right around the nipple area, the upper chest area. This is a rule of thumb, you wanna pick a rope that is three feet taller than your height. So I'm 6'3", so every rope that I use is right around nine feet, three inches. As you can see here, as I'm just doing regular bounce, I'm up on my toes, my feet are not coming more than an inch or two off the ground, my knees are bent slightly, cushioning my impact so my joints don't get hurt, my elbows are in, and my hands are jutting out to the sides of my hips, and my wrists are controlling everything. Now, a mistake that most people make when starting out that we get a lot of feedback about is they do two jumps, as you see here, for every time the rope swings around. I want you guys to get rid of this mentality and start, it's the easier way to jump rope, but it's not the correct way, and if you start off doing that, it's gonna be a lot harder to get yourself into just doing one skip for every rope turn. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is start off by just hopping. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and get that consistent rhythm down and get used to counting, and then envision the rope spinning one time underneath you every time you do that. Now, that brings me to my next point, guys. This might seem a little bit difficult at first, but let's incorporate the rope, and all I want you guys to do is practice swinging through one time and then stopping. So if you notice here, I'm just putting the rope behind my back, swinging it once underneath my legs, counting one and stopping. And then I'm resetting and I'm doing that again. All right, good, now that we have that, let's move up to two times. So just keep the rope steady and then go one, two. As you can see here, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to get this down. And as you see here, I'm just going one, two, and then stopping. One, two, and then stopping. Good guys, now I want you to move up to three. One, two, three, and stop. One, two, three, and stop. What this is doing is training your mind to always associate one rope skip with one time jumping your feet instead of two times jumping your feet. And this is essential if you want to spin the rope fast, if you wanna be able to do a lot of tricks, and just overall, you know, look like a ninja. The next thing I want you guys to focus on is jumping only one to two inches off the ground. A lot of people when they first start out jumping rope is they jump too high off the ground, and this causes shin splints, it causes aches and pain in their knees and, and ankles, and it's just unnecessary, guys. If you jump rope correctly, it is a low impact sport or exercise that is actually better for you than jogging. So guys, the only trick where we're jumping higher off the ground is really the double under or any trick where you're swinging the rope more than one time through in one hop. So for everything else, tricks and most tricks included, you're just gonna be coming 
two inches off the ground at most, maybe a little bit higher sometimes as you watch me here, but you wanna maintain those bent knees and uh, just cushioning every single hop that you have so you can jump rope for longer periods of time without any pain. So guys, I wanna talk about your arms. Now a lot of people, when they start out jumping rope, they have these very stiff arms as you can see here in this footage. And what this does is it does not allow the rope to be tight when spinning around them. So they're really working their shoulders super hard, but the problem is there's no forearm or wrist action, so the rope is not spinning around tight. An analogy that I like to use is think of a baseball player. If, he's a, if, if there's a pitcher and he has a ball like this and he's throwing it with a straight arm, first of all, he's not gonna be able to throw it that hard and he's probably not gonna have that much accuracy as opposed to if he winds up like this and coils it and kind of spins his arm around and throw it. You can throw it much faster if you bend your arm. The same applies to jumping rope. You're not gonna be able to spin the rope fast and keep it tight if your arms are super stiff like this. You need to make sure you're getting in proper arm motion with your, with your forearms. So keep the elbows in, let the forearms and the wrists do everything. They're gonna make sure that the rope stays tight as it spins around, which will allow you to go faster and do more tricks. Which brings me to the wrists. The most important part that anyone can focus on when jumping rope as a beginner is your wrist. Now, if you, I turn to the side angle here, you can see this little range of motion going on with my wrist. Just pretend that my wrist socket right here is just a ball bearing and that is swinging the rope around. That's how you keep it tight. And that's how, if you notice here in this footage, it looks like I'm pretty effortlessly spinning the rope super fast. It's all my wrists. I'm treating my wrist just like a ball bearing while slightly bending my arms at 90 degree angles to keep the rope tight. Putting all this together, when you start out practicing, I I think it's super important for beginners not to go five to six times a week like Brandon and myself do now and like many of our other advanced jump ropers do. I'd recommend, like I said, starting out with the four week challenge and just doing two to three workouts per week and having at least one, maybe two rest days in between your workouts to save your, to save your body from uh, the pain or some of the shin splints and aches that can come along when you're starting to jump rope. Yeah, I know, okay, and my mic's also still broken. Brandon like freaking left to LA and left me with this one. What a friend, huh? Calls, my, calls, calls me his brother. <laughs> I don't know where the brotherhood is there, you know? <laughs> Whatever.